Oh my god, grab yourself and make sure you're alive. Halloween is coming, guys. And when Halloween is on the way, so is our buddy Neil Parks, author, ghost hunter extraordinaire, and all knower to that is to all that is paranormal activity in the central Ohio area. Welcome to the show, Neil Parks. Hello, Neil. Good morning to all of you. I feel like I need my own theme song when you announce me like that. Did you <laughs> sleep in a coffin last night? <laughs> I. That's only on Monday nights. So how does oh, your wife? Uh, how does your wife I put up with this? It was. Like when October's on the way. Like is your wife just like, oh my god, here we go? <laughs> <laughs> well, the entire neighborhoods are like that uh, a lot because <laughs> first of all, the Halloween display that I do on the front lawn, uh, it's it's epic. It gets bigger and bigger every year. And I have one of those uh, twenty foot tall skeletons from Home Depot. Oh, it's That's awesome! awesome you man. have one of those. Those go for a lot of money online because <laughs> they're, awesome. they're sold out all the time. Those are awesome. Yeah, they're ridiculous now. I was fortunate enough to get a blip uh, a year ago when they were releasing them, and picked one up immediately. And then they went off the grid. No one can get them anymore. Hey, you're in Chillicothe, Neil. Uh, before we get into all of uh, these ghostly activities, have you been up to Sugarloaf Mountain to see Dracula playing uh, uh, where Tecumseh usually plays? Planning to do that uh, before Halloween, hopefully, uh, with the lack of availability on tickets and so forth. What do you hear uh, about it? Have you heard any good thing. things? I've heard some really amazing things about it. I mean, first of all, this is the uh, the event that well, of course, it's called Passion of Dracula, which uh, a lot there of people may get confused with Passion of the Christ. But it's uh, Passion of Dracula, okay. Sugar Loaf Mountain. Yeah, right. And it's a haunted countryside and uh, compilation, a mental institution. Look how long Jesus' teeth are. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Dude, that is so sick. I, I got to go up there and check that out because that is uh, one of those. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you hear Randy? No. <laughs> What did she say? I said, look how long Jesus' teeth are. Oh, no, I did hear that. I, did. I, I chose to ignore that. Okay. Um, yeah. Those are not incisors, Moses. Oh, oh, well, I mean, he would be well fed. I mean, all those disciples, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It would be an after party for the afterlife. I'll say Judas, would Judas wouldn't get away. Yeah, no I'll doubt. Tell you that. All right. Hey, so, Neil. In the area, you have done uh, some extensive research on everything that ghosts any kind of odd activity now in the last year year and a half you know we've had this whole corona situation and lockdown oh, yeah. uh has there been an influx in reports of people seeing ghosts or paranormal activity in your area well it's been a, a weird year and a half for sure i mean i've had to recreate and evolve the way i reach my audience the readers my listeners to my podcast since january 2019 and I mean, 2020, I'm sorry. And I've noticed a lot of stories coming out where people are locked in their homes in the beginning of this pandemic and encountering things that they didn't even know were there in their house, that they were sharing in an environment with uh, supernatural forces that they had no idea were at work in their home when they were at work a normal time. The ghosts are like so upset. They're like, listen, dude, we usually have like 70% of this apartment and now you're here 100% of the time. Oh, exactly. It's like Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Like, you're in my spot. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. now, have you you taken time to like write another book or anything? I mean, like, you've had uh, some time on your hands, man, some experiences. I had a lot of time. I released my first audio book last Halloween. Oh, good. Uh, I have a new one coming out, hopefully, and not this Halloween, but it will be before the end of the year. And I've shifted gears and have actually illustrated children's books that have nothing to do with the paranormal. Uh, oh, I love really? That. I would love to get involved because I also have always wanted to do that. That's it's uh, quite a uh, actually it's very challenging for someone who focuses on this type of genre and and environment and then all of a sudden draw happy little kids planting flowers and strawberry plants. And the last one that I illustrated is called uh, Twin Adventures in Ohio History. And it's all about the really cool locations throughout Ohio where people like Serpent Mounds, for example, Mound City, places like that. So I had to draw little kids hanging out around the mounds, but not disturbing the land, you know, or invoking ancient spirits. 
right. So do you find that there's more reports of quote unquote uh, parent paranormal activity or ghosts that happen inside of structures or is it more like in cemeteries? Um, surprisingly, uh, of course, or maybe not surprisingly to some, in structures, because that is a four-walled world. You are closed in with whatever is there or was there before the house was erected, whereas a cemetery is like a whole open format, and things don't happen all the time. Uh, you don't necessarily get residual activity or an intelligent haunt in a cemetery, just sort of trapped energy that is replaying the last moments of its life or... If it is something trapped here, it's acknowledging the fact that, hey, I'm dead. I've got to do something to move on to the next life. So you really believe that? You believe that, that there's some sort of mission after this life to get to the next? They're not what, at peace, what, right? The next, uh, yeah, whatever it is, a resting place? or Like a purgatory or a limbo for some spirits. And do you think that those are the ones that are the quote-unquote haunted? Or the hauntees? Part of it, as uh, well as residual uh, spirits, like in the battlefield of Gettysburg. If you were to build an entire neighborhood in that battlefield, every house would be haunted indefinitely, not because of what happened in the house, but because of what happened on the land. You're now placing it where they usually walk. So now they're walking yeah. through your house, through your walls, but they're walking their normal route. It's just your house is there now. Are there any areas like that in Ohio that you can think of? Muirfield. Uh, oh, yeah, the yeah, exactly. Deerfield. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, there's also a place, uh, oddly enough, in the Huntington Hills, uh, down here south of Chillicothe. It was a burial ground for Civil War soldiers, but they were African-American Civil War soldiers who could not be buried with white soldiers. So they were just cast upon a hilltop, unmarked graves, and people started building houses in this area, and they started being affected by uh, what was beneath the ground that they weren't aware of. Wow, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Man. Okay, it also happens to where we have our old buildings, like University of Tennessee. Uh, you know, if th there was something go like Civil Wars going on all on those on those grounds, so people would see Civil War ghosts walking up on the hill top all yeah. the time, in and out of buildings. But like right here, our Ohio State House. Uh, I guess there's a lady in gray floating between the State House and Camp Chase where Confederate prisoners were incarcerated. Many died during the Civil War. Wow. She's described as a shadowy figure, slim and dressed in somber gray clothing. She always looks down and appears to be weeping into a handkerchief uh, she carries with her. And where do people see her? Inside? Inside or? Ohio, mm -hmm. Ohio uh, State House. That's interesting. Hey, and so you mentioned the Green Lawn Cemetery. I mean, it's yeah. the second largest cemetery in all of Ohio. And it is one of the most haunted locations in Columbus as well. It's my grandpa. Yes. Yeah, so that is uh, so that is a, a cemetery that is haunted. And so why would that be? Because yeah. like usually there's trauma in a place like where there where there's uh, a, for lack of a better word a ghost that is left over, and someone's spirit will then kind of torture that area because they were tortured before death. What would happen at a cemetery? You're already dead. You're just being brought to your final resting place. A lot of cases in the early 1900s, even up to that point, and well, of course, uh, 17 and 1800s, people were determined dead and weren't really dead a lot of times, so they were buried alive. They would snap out of their uh, short-term coma and be like, what the hell, I'm in a box, and then they would die there, and of course, that oh. fear is not resting well. That's what led to the bells being placed inside the caskets for a while, yes. because they would hear scratching. And they would eventually open it up, and the person's deceased, but there would be scratch marks in the coffin, like they were alive. They that woke up from their coma, insane. like you say. That is insane. Um, another another scary place around here, right here in Columbus, would be Orton Hall at Ohio State University. Have you heard of that, Neil? Cal? I have heard of Orton Hall. I have not looked enough into it myself. I've not been on the campus in a very long time. Here's the I've reason. people contact me from there to talk about it. Now... Spirits also attach themselves to objects, right? And to items. Yeah. Antique shops are a fun place to check out. Oh, really? I, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I never considered that. So the Orton Geological Museum, uh, some have reported seeing ghosts of a prehistoric man walking the halls. In Orton prehistoric? Hall, it's yeah. where the famous chimes are, so it's you hear it all over the campus. When oh, they they is this wow. the chimes right up here? Yeah. Oh, my God. Really? Hey, so, Neil, so what is the theory behind That's the whole, awesome. uh, if, if people go to antique shops, like, can you buy something and potentially take uh, some sort of spirit home with you? 
Uh, that actually, that was one of the last cases I worked on before the pandemic hit was a painting that someone that I knew purchased from an antique shop and wacky stuff started happening in his home. And when he peeled back the layers and we talked more about it, he realized it didn't happen until he brought that painting home. And it was a painting of a small boy with really big eyes holding a dog. Oof. And it was painted in the 1870s, I believe. He got it for a song. It was a really cool painting. And he kept seeing the little boy in his house, following him around, uh, being at the end of the hall, and then just dissipating as it would walk towards him. And it was invading his nightmares, and his kids were in engaging with it. And I'm like, yeah, you need to get that painting out of your house, because it could lead up to a poltergeist. This thing is appearing as a child to you, and as a child to your children. I don't know what kind of of energy or energy whatsoever could be attached to that, you might just want to get rid of it and see if things calm down a bit. And sure enough, he got rid of the painting, uh, took care of it, disposed of it, not destroyed it, but disposed of it, because that acted as a debit box for whatever was trapped in it. And it was acknowledged, uh, they were acknowledging that it existed, so it was becoming more and more prevalent in their home. So what's another spot in Columbus? Because I have a few for you that I, I'm just curious if you've ever had any uh, calls from. Like, what about the State of Ohio Asylum for the Insane Cemetery? Oh, well, that and, uh, well, the Red, Brick uh, the Red Brick Tavern I was about to mention. But the Insane Asylum Cemetery, um, I couldn't get access to it. Now, of course, I was trying to get access to it late at night. Yeah. Because uh, I find that to be the, the best time to really walk the grounds. It's almost as if a veil is lifted uh, in the nighttime between uh, daytime hours. I don't know if that's uh, psychological or supernatural, but it just seems to be out of all the cases I've worked, the given time to do it. Yeah, and I, so I, this I, uh, this is, is, uh, is supposed to be right next to the police station, right? Right. Right, and the, and the officers I contacted or the the property manager I was he thought I was wacky so and I mean <laughs> I even have a business card and I'm like look this is what I do this is what I've been on and he's like yeah okay yeah nice but now we're not interested <laughs> and there are some places that have tales attached to them hauntings and stories and you go to communicate with someone from there that's running or operating it and they're like not interested at all in bringing that kind of uh, publicity to the environment have you heard of the Thurber House? Uh, Thur uh, Thurber or Dober House? Thurber. Thurber was the, the writer, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the Thurber House, that one, I believe, that's close to the uh, Blind Lady Tavern, isn't it? I believe so, yeah. the uh, There's, like I guess, a general consensus that a lot of the people uh, had died in a fire at a, uh, at a middle institution that was, like, right there at the Thurber House. The before. ones trapped in the top floor. Yes. Yes, I uh, have not been there, but I have talked to people that worked there or had worked there at the time. Hmm. That's pretty crazy. And there was, um, like, the ridges in Athens when yes. that was a mental institution before it was abandoned and they decided that it was unethical to do electroshock on people. Uh, one of the people that had been institutionalized was at one time an employee at the Thurber, uh, that area around the Thurber house. And they had told me things about what they had seen in that area uh, attributed to the fire and what led up to it and what happened after the fact. Well, not just before the Michigan game, but uh, when it's not drained, but they say Mirror Lake because there was yes. a, a guy that was jogging near there that got murdered? Uh, a couple of murders, uh, some accidental drawings, and people who frequent the lake still take walks by it or sit by it and just focus or study or meditate, uh, will hear splashing or cries coming from the water where people are still there screaming for help as they're drowning. Ew. Wow. Oh, that is crazy. Have you heard <laughs> of a spot called the elevator, like where the clock yeah. is always stuck at 10.05? Oh, yes, the elevator. I was confused about that at first. I thought it was just an elevator. <laughs> it's actually uh, you know, a business called the elevator. Uh, I believe it's a pub. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, used as a pub now. Uh, that one, according to uh, Haunted Rooms Registry, 
on the most haunted spots in Ohio. That's like, I think, three or four on their list. Oh, no kidding, really? Three or four it's is pretty decent. By, it's gone by many different names. Uh, I mean, they keep rebranding themselves. Uh, after a, people work there for a while, they quit. The clock is always stuck at 10.05, no matter what they do. No way. That is so oh, crazy, wow. man. And the place is beautiful on the inside. It's like you are caught in a moment in, in time. I mean, this is like yeah, everything yeah, inside is... Here. It's just like that. Yeah, why redo it when it's perfect? No, the, the story is that a, a colonel who was well-known, a well-known womanizer, died at exactly 10.05 p.m. when he was stabbed outside the bar by a disgruntled ex-lover. Uh, I mean, the only evidence in the crime uh, were bare footprints in the snow. But uh, these days, the brewery tap room is said to be haunted, and customers have seen the colonel's ghost in the building. That's nuts. And, of course, uh, everybody talks about the the old prison, uh, the penitentiary downtown. Uh, the Mansfield Performatory? Or the, no, 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 the one we used to have, the Ohio. Yeah, yeah, like where the crew uh, stadium Ohio. is now, I guess, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that uh, that's an interesting place to put the crew stadium, by the way. <laughs> Really, I can only I can only imagine what people who work there uh, have, have experienced after hours, or when they're alone, or it's just a few of them uh, on those grounds. So, a couple minutes ago, you mentioned Red Brick Tavern. Are you talking about in German Village? Uh, yeah, the Red Brick. Tavern what, what's German the Village. deal with that? Because my mom used to live in German Village, and that's where everybody in the neighborhood hung out at this place. Yeah, it's been around since Brick. like eighteen thirty six. Yeah, or something. she was there all the time. Yeah. So, what's the deal yeah. with that place? Well, it was built in 1836, like you mentioned, and I mean, these days it's uh, home to a restaurant, and this, like, six presidents were known to have visited, I think, John Quincy Adams, uh, Martin Van Buren, Harrison, Zachary Taylor. Uh, the terms of the building's uh, haunted aspect is said there to be a female ghost in the upstairs area of the restaurant. She's often seen looking out the upstairs windows, and customers have heard her footsteps walking above them while they're eating downstairs. Oh, that's so crazy, man. I, I could have you on for hours, man. Neil Parks, uh, you are doing your own podcast now, so uh, make sure you tell people about that and where they can find it. Oh, you can find it on Spotify, iTunes. I made it to iTunes, finally. Uh, awesome. I have, on average, about 10,000-plus listeners a week, uh, which is pretty good for an independently run podcast. I'm not, like, um, heavily operated under sponsorship. I just I do it all on my own and put it out there and... Word of mouth has really paid off, and I'm tied into uh, different formats and uh, podcasting groups. And I also do um, independent podcasting summit once a year through uh, Zoom. Uh, that's coming up in November. I'll be doing that and doing a special one half hour segment for that convention. What's the podcast called? It's called Paranormally Speaking with Neil Parks. All right, one more question here before you go. Yeah, some people are writing in. They want to hear about the Blue Stone, and I definitely want to bring it up because oh, yeah. Loper will be there Friday night with our daughter. Yeah, I'm going to go to a country concert over there. He so, promised her, oh, yeah. See it. Yeah, see you guys over there. I, I don't know. Oh, you, don't- <laughs> <laughs> you, you say the Blue Stone? The Blue Stone. No. It used to be a church downtown. Yeah. Ah, it's a country concert at a church. That's sacrilege, dude. It's a but, cool. Man. It's a cool venue. We saw Boba Flex yeah. there. There's a couple of people we've yeah. seen there, like because their basement is so sick. They do like raves in the basement, and then they have. Oh, you know what else? Um, Glass. Yeah, uh, my friend did his uh, the sex show there that they do every year. What is that called? Drama or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, I got what you're talking about it's considered trauma. Best trauma. Venue. Trauma. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kind of like drama, but <laughs> trauma. That's right. <laughs> Uh, what exactly are you expecting? Uh, or you say your daughter's going? Yeah, well, I'm going with her and her friends. And I've been, Randy and I have been there before. And this place, you just know it's haunted. It was uh, built in 1898. Gotta be haunted. Yeah, it's not a church anymore. Oh, it's course, a venue yeah. now. Ah. Uh, Thanks, Rick. Wow. <laughs> Were they going to pass around the offering plate during? Well, no, he goes a country concert at a church is sacrilegious. I wanted to make sure he knew what a church is. <laughs> so nothing you know of yet. So maybe that's one you got to get on, yeah, man. Not and, on Bluestone, I've yeah. not heard anything on that. That's I like the name. That's for sure. Get the ectometer <laughs> out, bro. Get out there and do. Th- hey, do you know those guys that have the legit uh, Ghostbusters cars around town? Oh, yeah, I know those guys. I know those you did. of Columbus are really cool guys. They are nice guys. I, before the yeah. pandemic, we were seeing them around uh, quite a bit, man. All right. Hey, buddy, 
uh, thanks so much for being on. We love you, Neil. Uh, Neil Parks, a friend of the show, uh, a resident of the great city of Shalagatha, also known as Chillicothe. <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I like Neil a lot. And I think you should check out his podcast and support his books and whatever he does. Thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks so much for having me again, guys. Great.